Okay, Virgil. This How is goes it? it. It's good. High five. We, uh, high five. <laughs> high five. We are at um, IKEA's uh, patent shop at IKEA of Sweden in Elmund. Uh, Virgil and his team arrived today. Yeah. We've been working with uh, the collection that we are creating for the millenniums, uh, looking at prototypes, looking at samples, discussing yeah. creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I think it's been a good day so far. No, super. Yeah. It's been the, tr like, for most people would know, it's like a tremendous amount of work Absolutely. to bring ideas that yeah. are floating into the yeah. air yeah. into a system like this, which is very, you can't make things without all the full information. No. So no. today we started with the sort of big breakdown and now we're getting project by project and we're even standing on a piece. This is actually like a, f a first sample of uh, a rock that uh, Virgil has, uh, has uh, Put his signature on, you could say. <laughs> Quite literally. Yes. And I think it's, you know, as we're opening up to questions around the world yeah. about this project, which I think is super cool and uh, open source, for me, this is a great piece to kick off the design ethos. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. important to note that these yeah. projects come out at later in time, but this is a good, in a nutshell, premise. It's <laughs> crashing together two emotions to find a new expression. Yeah. So it's a little bit like what. What we did is we took a uh, traditional oriental rock, a pattern mm -hmm. from sort of the tradition of the oriental uh, rocks and, and uh, actually combined it with a contemporary uh, take, your yeah. take, keep off. Which I think is quite a fun, this kind of, uh, you're supposed to, to actually stand or walk on a carpet or yeah. have your foot on it, but here we kind of twist it a little bit with saying keep yeah. off. And my thing is like, why add another, uh, it's the same premise as my work, yeah. why add another version of something that already exists? Exactly. The reason why yeah. we're making this version, it's provocative in a way that makes you think, you know, yeah. now you notice the rug, yeah. because these words are usually limited to sort of, you know, sirens to keep you away from mm. something. So, yeah. like, it's, and it's also, I mean, this is, it, it's super nice to hear what you guys out there yeah. think about this rug, what you, what are your, what is your, uh, Feelings. What are your feelings around it? Do you like it? <laughs> do you hate it? Do you hate it? The internet, do, you want so. us, do, do you want us to redo it? <laughs> exactly. Can we go ahead? Yeah, or sh are we shutting it down? Oh, shutting uh, that's it down. not happening. No, that's not happening. <laughs> but no. we're here to take questions. This is an open source design. You know, this is a very unique scenario where the designers are bringing in the public. And it's important to know that's what this process is about. Mm. It's not sort of us just determining what ends up in your homes. like. Like you said, design is about people. Exactly. And so this, do we have any questions coming in? Yeah. Yes. That would be great. Um, can you please explain why you are so fascinated by the idea of democratizing design? Yeah, you uh, go. Cool. Well, your... <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, my, uh, that's my home base. <laughs> well, it's about making uh, design affordable for, uh, for the many people around the world. And in this case, it's about making uh, affordable for the millenniums. And I think it's, uh, I mean, we know that young people around the world have limited e economic resources. Yeah. For, for Virgil and for IKEA to join forces and do something that has a unique design, mm -hmm. but at a democratic price, affordable, yeah. So you get something, uh, it's like a kinder egg. Yeah. And kind of, <laughs> kind of a valuable product in emotional value, but uh, for an affordable price, yeah. which I think is genius. And for me, it's the education aspect. Yeah, you absolutely. know, like in the history of design, there's certain things that are sort of on a pedestal, yeah. which are usually far from the people yeah. due to price, due to information, education. And my thought process is IKEA with democratic design as a sort of main ethos allows everyone to participate in mm. design. That barrier is removed mm. of access, the barrier is removed mm. of economics, you know, and it's about us pouring in all our knowledge, all mm. our training, all mm. our education mm. in the products that make people sort of celebrate design yeah. around them. Absolutely. What does home mean to you? Oh. Hmm. Well, I've, well I've, I've asked you that question. Yeah. Where, where, where is I'm your sure home? Yeah, my home is in an airplane, in my <laughs> suitcase, <laughs> yeah. but in essence, you know, this is what's great. This project is important to know. It's rooted in millennials and their approach. And they look at everything untraditionally. So yeah. home, in a, maybe if you asked five years ago, I would have said, oh, that's where you pay your rent. That's where you feel most comfortable. That's where your stuff is. Mm. Now, the idea of home for me is like, where are you most comfortable? Where are you most comfortable with being yourself? Mm. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. So. But also a place where you kind of, can express your personality and your identity. Yeah. I mean, 
Yeah. Obviously, yeah. a lot of people today we are kind of very sort of nomadic in the way we live. We yeah. are, you know, always on the move, and uh, it's still still having some kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, a base yeah, in exactly. your life. Yeah, it's, it's important. Super. So that's home. That's home. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts behind this collection uh, with IKEA. So that's for you, Bertie. Uh, my thoughts are, in in my thirty seven years of living. My thoughts are that this is kind of like one of the most important design projects you could ever take on in your life, principally because I'm an architect. So this is more in the spirit, but I've done other things that are more like, uh, you know, what temporary to say the least, mm. like mm. clothing, mm. packaging design, art direction for a concert or something. And what intrigues me most is that furniture essentially lives longer than your existence. You know, this is putting a lot of thought and energy for something that'll take on value mm. for every decade that it exists until mm. it ends up in the trash. So this project as a whole requires a, 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 tremendous, a, a tremendous range of thinking, which is the world you live in. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's yeah, what you do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what's important to note, the scale. Mm. Like, we were looking at pieces today that are 700 mm. million mm. units. Mm. In the, that number is like so far advanced, so that just frames the reference, you know, like I might make a t-shirt that might be 300 of those might exist in mm. the world. Like this is, you know, is a tremendous amount of responsibility and design decisions. Mm. Yeah, and it has a, t a super big impact on how we meet the customers because we want this collection to be available globally for people. Yeah. I mean, for young people or at any age. No matter if you live in Tokyo, New York, or you live in a small city, yeah, it should be uh, accessible. Exactly. Uh, so you can get it. <laughs> but the scale is, is you get yeah. surprised. Yeah, no, nah, it's it's yeah. a good it's a switching the yeah. gears yeah. of yeah. the way of thinking. Yeah. But that's what yeah. brings us together. I think we're bringing yeah. both yeah. to one next. So um, why IKEA? Because you seem to have you seem to do a lot of collabs with everyone these days. How involved are you in the process, and where do you find the time? Well, super involved. It's taken a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> super I like these questions. Yeah, because they're all funny. Uh -huh. like, yeah. But no, it's very simple. My idea is that humans don't make things by themselves. You know, collaboration isn't like a kitsch word. It's not like a punchline. It's, it's the reality. But to my generation, largely businesses, people keep their collaborators closed, so you can only admire the figure. Mm. That's not of my way of thinking, and that's just the way that I operate. And secondhand, I only collaborate with the best in each category. Mm. There's a lot of individuals, a lot of corporations that are best in their category. When you think of them, you know, footwear, something comes to mind. Beverage, something comes to mind. Why not bring a young approach to something that is that sort of, you know, great at what they do? To me, ask yourself, where can you afford a, a beautifully designed table that's under $300? You know, you might be able to get one at IKEA for four dollars. Mm -hmm. And let why take these ideas, these pro progressive ideas, and bring them to uh, an institution that's made its practice about being democratic mm -hmm. and pushing design. And I mean, also in that sense, that you kind of we think about who's going to actually buy it. That we, I mean, being a young person, you might not always have the thickest wallet in the world. <laughs> you know, just paying the rent, and yeah, uh, stuff like that. You, yeah, you spend it and go out and have fun. Which also, is design to design me is like. Like, in essence, like, design is free. Yeah. You know, the thought. Mm. Of course, in our world, the more thought or design, usually you can charge way more. Mm. And in my range, thing is, of course, my practice of clothing is at a certain price point mm. because that's what it has to be. But my output is like, this is affordable. Mm. Let's be in the same conversation. Mm. What does your team look like? What's your team look like? My team is, right now it's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are Mo, but they're actually not here right now. They were here a little bit earlier. I have, uh, I'm a creative leader for the collection and uh, I have a fantastic team of product developers, technicians, engineers who support us on, uh, yeah, on developing the product from the idea until it is actually finished. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's a little bit like that. I mean, we merge teams now. We have yeah. a phase where we kind of, we work together now, and, and we take learnings from each other, uh -huh. uh, from your yeah. creativity, meeting the IKEA reality. <laughs> yeah, the reality is the yeah. best. But my team is made up, it's worthy to know, everyone on my team is like oldest 23. Mm. You know, I met all of them on Instagram. Mm. 
So within the off-white, my sort of like uh, objects and furniture design, there's uh, Hannah who's been with me for mm. the longest, maybe mm. like four or five years. Yeah. And then Taylor, young kid from New Zealand, who is worthy to know, has never been to an Ikea store mm. ever because there isn't one mm. where he's from. Uh, I met him at an in-store, mm. and the kid, I was signing books, mm. and he came up to me and said, he said, hey, I go to design school and I design furniture, and I was like, show me your Instagram. Mm. He showed it to me, and I was like, take my phone number. Mm. Took my phone number, and we've been on text ever since then, oh, great. and he's just been like hungry to design. Mm. I was like, I'm working on my, in my studio, it's like, mm. ideas don't end up in thin air, they end up in, in product. Mm. So, Taylor and Tawanda, again, Instagram, commented on a photo and said, hey, you know, I came from this gallery in Paris. I like what you're doing. Do you need any help? And so, mm. you know, that's the core. It's mm. all young. And the way I look at it, it's just as much as an, an honor and opportunity for me. But look at these, like, young people who mm. are truly <laughs> millennials I mean, making exactly. things. Yeah, exactly. And it's experience, you know. Yeah, exactly. Will and this collection be worldwide? Yes, it will be a global collection. It will be worldwide, um, so it will be available for, for people. Can you explain the challenges, differences in designing pieces for the home rather than designing clothing? Uh, I touched on it a bit, but the permanence. You know, like when I think uh, it's un it's the fact of the nature is that clothing, the industry is sort of on this six months. Mm. You know, it's a tradition, and I'm trying to break that in my own way, but trends come and you're supposed to like usher a new trend and then that leads you mm. to feel like your jacket doesn't relate mm. anymore you know mm. with furniture the idea is like what you buy a bed two three times exactly. a year in your lifetime exactly. you know you buy a you yeah. introduce a new chair that's like a it's usually out of necessity or you know or desire but mostly like mm. hey i moved to a new apartment i need to find something to sit on you end up living with that for a while so i think this is more to my nature, you know, with my architecture is where I started mm. designing objects at human scale that people live with. But it's also a little bit like saying that when you design a chair or a table or a rock for that matter, hopefully it will have a lasting life. Yeah. Something you carry with you because there's an emotional value in it. Yeah. And uh, not to be, uh, you know, but a, a basic white t-shirt can be a basic white t-shirt. That's something that you can actually change faster, but you, you I mean. Yeah. Investing and, and having a rug in your apartment is something that you uh, yeah. want to have for, for some years. And my thing, which is you know just an added note, is I want to bring the energy and excitement around a new t-shirt, the latest shirt that's exactly. equal to an into other aspects yeah. of your home. Yeah. Like not just your closet, yeah. what's your living room, yeah. what's your but kitchen, you know, like, and then it's like, hey, you're not just as excited about your new jacket, you're excited about your new environment. But I think there's something interesting in there we've been discussing a lot that, that, that uh, I mean, we have, the function is already covered when we talk about carpets or rocks. So what, what do we want, what do yeah. you want to add? Yeah. You want to add an emotional value to it where it's functional? I mean, obviously this will, a rock will provide a, a, a nice sound. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's a soft sound, but it's also cool. Yeah, simply, well, to, you know. and, I said, and I said this in our talk in, in Los Angeles, but as a designers and us coming together, technically this can be a superior role, but then I can add the modern energy exactly. that makes it emotional. Yeah. You know, I look at this, it's like, it's borderline a rug. It's a mm. piece of art yeah. to me for those that sort of know my language mm. and the twist. And I'm fortunate to be able to put those things mm. together and mm. call it a rug. Yeah. Well, a lot of people are asking about uh, how affordable it will be and when when it will be available to, to yeah. buy in the stores. <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, I'm not going to put a price tag on, on the rock today. It's a really good question, but I think it's for IKEA, it's always about having affordable prices. So you so th it will be affordable. Uh, that, 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 that's the premise. That's the premise. That's democratic design for IKEA. Uh, the availability when it will be launched, I can I can reveal that much. It will be in uh, the coming two years, within the coming two years, we will uh, be able to launch the collection. I mean, it's maybe it's it's. I I, I think it's also something that differs a bit from working with fashion, <laughs> that the, with working with yeah. design is that the production time is much longer. You know, you can get a collection of fashion clothes out yeah. very fast, but actually designing a rock or a table or, 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 or 
Yeah. So yeah, it is a long production time. So. And, and part of this is like, hey, we're, that's why we're revealing things now. Yeah. There's no, this idea, we're showing it because it's, you know, I thought of it far, like, in a distance. Mm. You know, that's the different challenges. Yeah. And I think it's important that the demographic tuning in mm. realizes what production times are. You know, yeah. products don't come yeah. from thin air. No. I mean, Every, even the shirt, you yeah. know, there's fabric that yeah. gets cut. There's a cost to that. It gets shipped, you know. Yeah. Yeah. With this, you know, I, I'm, I hope to go see, but like the the yarn, the dye, the prototyping so, along, and then making 10 of these, 10,000 of these, enough to go around the world yeah. takes time. And, and, and testing them for <laughs> uh, amount of things that we always do at IKEA for, you know, for dirt, for, uh, for uh, safety, for fire. You know, we have a lot of requirements. We have to live up to being a, such a, a global company. But we are really curious about what people think about it. If they like it or it's, yeah, do you hate uh, it? Do we do we and need to get a new job? I'm not going to be a creative and leader. Before we open up the floodgates, there's one yeah. rule in my studio. Okay, is that you. Everyone can, uh, the whole goal is everyone critiques it and tries yeah. to bury it, burn yeah, it. Yeah, but that's, but uh, in order like to do so, you have to put another to, idea exactly. on the table. Something constructive. Uh, yeah, okay. or you have to say, this, this I don't like, yeah. but it should be this. Yeah. You can't stop at this I don't like. Because no. then you're not, then you don't have anything better. You just no, have exactly. to critique. So Add something. Any of these questions that... Yeah, uh, we have some, you have been talking now about the rug, but what about other design ideas? What have you been working on today? Can uh, you share something oh. of, of uh, what you're looking yeah. into when it comes to furniture pieces? Well, we've been working on uh, chair solutions. Uh, we've been working on uh, a lamp. We've been working on uh, talking about uh, table. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, we can reveal that much that we looking into a day bed solution also. So we're kind of, I would say it's kind of the essentials that goes into creating your first home that we've been talking about, looking into prototypes and materials and wow, we can push this forward. So, uh, so that's what we've been working on the floor right now. But besides that, we've been talking about uh, a lot of other products which will go into the collection accessories and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot coming up. Yeah. The the original brief that we wrote together was like providing new solutions for a millennium's first home. Yeah. So, what, you know, there's a grouping, so we're addressing, yeah, chairs, bed, we're asking questions, we're adding things, we're deleting things. Yeah. We're here trying to make a full kit yeah. about special small items all the way to Big things skin. that you sleep on and things yeah. that you eat at. And it's these kind of very sort of human needs. We all would like at least to have something to sit on, something <laughs> to eat at or work at, and something to relax. Yeah. These are the kind of uh, basic needs uh, in, in a living, uh, mm -hmm. living, living environment. Life. And of course, taking a shower. But we're not <laughs> going to design a shower suit. Yeah, yeah. We're starting, <laughs> we're starting with the, with the, the essentials. The essential in the, in the one room where all activities take place. Mm -hmm. What about color palettes? Have you discussed that yet? Or any yeah. ideas? I'm a firm believer in the philosophy that, uh, like, being honest to materials. Mm. So even before color palette, I'm interested in using materials and sort of showcasing what that is. Mm. So this morning's meeting was very much about different types of wood, the expressions of each. Not so much at this point have we discussed palette, but it's important to note, I'm trying to make something universal. You know, how many, is it two billion customers in it's, Ikea? It's a lot. <laughs> Don't put my head on it. I heard that in, in the, the call. In <laughs> But essentially, <laughs> did we someone know? Like, what's this, when so I, what is, uh, like, how many, how many people shop at Ikea in the globe or in a year? No one knows. But it's on the order of something is, very massive. Yeah. So that's also, when people talk about clothing, you know, the clothing is for, like, a unique it's a thing, you know, each, there's millions of brands and, mm. and that you cater to your little. Mm. This is mm. on the order of humanity. You know, exactly. I can't think of anything. No. So I'm, just as a social responsibility designer, I'm not trying to make something so specific that it takes that huge opportunity. It's like only people that like orange <laughs> exactly. can live with this. If you yeah. don't like orange, it's yeah. not for you. I'm thinking about universality mm. in terms of color palettes. These things have to live in your homes, mm. you know, so. 
that's the ethos more than the color. But my favorite colors are like basically in this rug, mm. neutral tones. You know. Yeah. Any more? Yes. What aspects of architecture can you bring into furniture design? Wow, that's a good one. Both of you. you I'll, let, I'll start and then you finish. But basically, <laughs> and it's an, a joy for me. I call, him, I call him a closet modernist. <laughs> yeah, he's a closet modernist. Really exactly. He loves these old icons. The old ones. <laughs> yeah. old, but he is actually a postmodernist, <laughs> trying to be a and modernist. I'm trying to crash them two together. So it's, uh, yeah. But architecture, it's important. I, I have the fortunate, that's my foundation. And it's important to note that it's, it's equally buildings that you see, but it's more of a way of thinking and a practice. Mm. And within architecture, there's been theories that have arose, that we've arisen to, to this contemporary time. And for me, modernism was this sort of like view on how the, the world, international style design relates to an aesthetic. Mm. You know, so Mies van der Rohe to Rem Koolhaas, you know, that's, I started- But that's a big, that's a big- It's uh, a big gap. That's a big gap. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Take that yeah, and like, he, put hip hop. <laughs> you know, yeah, like. yeah, but I mean, Ben Kolas <laughs> was a little bit like, I don't like modernism. Yeah. He was deconstructing everything. It's off white. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. it's, I take my foundation because yeah. I studied yeah. at Illinois Institute of Technology. Yeah. Mies van der Rohe not only yeah. did the curriculum but designed the campus. Yeah. And then Rem Koolhaas made the student center, yeah. Yeah. which opened the year that I was, the middle yeah. year that I was there. So I was learning and then rejecting but my, I like what was contemporary at the time and challenging so that gave me my ethos yeah. you know legitimately I arose at this vocabulary the things that I've output from having yeah. some other practice making mm -hmm. contemporary things yeah. but architect each architect has a rhythm in their mm -hmm. own rule system and mm -hmm. I've taken inspiration from ones that inspired mm -hmm. me and made my own mm -hmm. but for you you've brought up the Bauhaus, you brought up some great bullet points in your design history. Is your yeah, background in architecture? No, in design. Gotcha. No, but I mean, you are, I think, at the, also when we when we look at, I mean, this is obviously a, a, a oriental work, but the, yeah. mo the modernity is quite clear yeah, yeah. in you when you bring this contemporary thing into it. And when I look at what you otherwise do, also the prototype we're working with, you have a very sort of very sharp, minimal form language, uh -huh. you know, the, the, the necessity of things. Yeah. It's, you are very far from Sarah Hadid or uh, somebody who is form extremely something. sculptural. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, uh, it's more kind of minimal and, and, and yeah. uh, clean form yeah. language. I think the architecture movement that I'm a part of is called streetwear. Okay, <laughs> streetwear, yeah. Quote me on that. Oh, yeah. So people are asking about what these bags, what's in it, and also what's the history behind sculpture? Well, just quickly, because, you know, this is an important piece because my first trip to Elmhood, mm. where we are now, mm. was, you know, s escaping, I think, a, uh, a green room meeting that I was supposed to be at and running into this very room and making something. Mm. Like, I'm a maker. Mm. I don't have patience to, like, be non-creative. And so what I wanted to do, since this is a very iconic contemporary item and form, is is do it in another fabric mm. and in the dna is like for what we're doing inside there with this two-year project it has to start from tactile making things so this hopefully will come out later you know anything that i make i want to see out in the but world we will this will <laughs> yeah. definitely come out but this idea is that you know just what you can learn from making models at home yourself is like doing it another fabric doing another color it gives a different expression what can you learn from here and apply it just like this. It seems like, like a bad idea, very impractical. This has traveled around the world. Mm. Like it doesn't really fit in a carry-on, but that it's just a good study to do it in an impractical material. You learn something here that can inform what the final version will be later. Mm. And to me, these are like, you know. But it, I mean, it is a little bit like the way you work with design that you you study the the, the, the originals, yeah, and then you kind of. Uh, not rip them apart, but you kind of uh, dismantle them. Yeah. And then you put them back together again, and that could be material 
that can be adding uh, the sculpture text or elements 100%. that when you know you would uh, normally not associate with the band. Yeah. Right? And one so it gets a, a new life. A new life, and that's you know, my practice is to sort of educate others on this. Like this is what we're seeing now is usually you'll never see. There is no periscope in design. Usually you keep this hidden. Where, yeah. and I'm doing this because this is how advancements get made. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't get made on a couch <laughs> with your friends thinking about oh, no, no. that's good, yeah. that's bad. You know, like you, these new. You know, we've all been on the computer. You can design. And Photoshop and things. Something that I've learned, you know, I'm still learning, is that yeah. nothing beats actually making something by hand. Exactly. And that's this is like, in order for design to move forward, yeah. I think it has to be investigating things. Mm. In them. Absolutely. That's what design is. It's not about fancy rendering. <laughs> yeah. By the end of the day. Cool. Next. So who yeah. contacted who? Well, you know, we we met actually. Yeah. We had uh, we had some contact. Uh, in some on Milan. Yeah, uh, we met in Milan when IKEA was hosting a design festival, yeah. and uh, you were you were hanging around, and what yeah. we were yeah we just but got it's talking. Funny, you know what the funny? You don't even know the story. I don't think anyone at IKEA knows this exact. No. I would you know I think of ideas and I execute on them. Okay. So I was. A year before, I was like, I want to do a collaboration with IKEA. But then you go. It's I, told of, my, you, you I told my I told my lawyer. We have a connection. Yeah, I told my <laughs> lawyer, and I was like, oh yeah. But I told my lawyer, and I was like, I want to get in because you you don't know how to call, how do you call? What's the phone number to call IKEA? Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, my lawyer was like, I know someone in like trademark that has worked with them. And so I wrote an email to the contact that he knew, never responded. Mm -hmm. So that was it. I was like done. Did never happen. Mm -hmm. I gave up on it. Mm -hmm. Then I got an email from you guys about the rug, mm -hmm. and before I responded, I didn't even read the thing. That, like I didn't spend enough time to read. I was like, oh, the door is open. And then I reread the email, and I was like, it's only a rug. <laughs> I was like, no, but it was. I was like, no, exactly. And I was like, I was like, I have more, I have more ideas yeah, than yeah, just absolutely. one rug. But if that's the only door, you I'll do to, a rug. You have to start somewhere. Yeah, with IKEA. but. Now we're so good. it was it that that was and, and since then it's been you know a very sort of organic, organic process. Yeah, you know, but we're still we kind big. Of Next question. Yeah, so I lost a few questions before we round up. Uh, will there be any home decor along the lines of paintings or photos? Hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. what I we'll yeah. take it this far. My idea is that it gets very specific to suggest like and like I believe in artists so. I, I hope that people buy artists and support mm. local artists and decor. What I'm taking it as far as is making frames that are sort of like start engaging people to buy in their own art and decor their house. Like sure. we're making decor, we're making we're not just thinking big yeah. items, we're thinking small items. Small items that also a little bit like the frame is kind of the in itself uh, <laughs> part of the artwork. A hundred percent. It's suggestive. And that's also a little bit what we want to. We really want to engage with you guys out there. And, yeah. and it's not always about, and not only about IKEA providing and virtual providing all the, the, the final solutions, but also opening up. You have a fantastic frame designed by Virgil. Yeah. What can you put into it? What would you put into it and, and show your uh, creativity and your personality and what you like? Yes, it's not a top down. No sort of approach it's more that's why we're doing this yeah. it's like inviting your own aesthetics to yeah. meet something here so you have a last question then uh, you've been talking about uh, inviting students to join yeah yeah and uh, we have some questions here if they are interested in doing so how should they do it what should they do to be part of this use this hashtag i think this hashtag should be important for the life cycle of the project because i think yeah. What it is, it's something that we all can communally go mm. back to. What I'd like to see is to be a part of the process and to be involved in this. It's more like use the hashtag to put up images of your place, put up you know ideas that you think should be considered by us. Like mm. if you find that this chair is work perfect for your apartment work scenario, or you mm. prefer you know like this type of bed to that, just. It's a, you know, this is open source. Use social media to share your thoughts, and that's becoming a part of the process because that's how we've sort of engineered the whole idea. Yeah. And we will continue this way of, yeah. of working and sharing what we do, 
So this is uh, just the beginning. Yeah, I know. And we will take all the, the things we get in, you know, yeah. from from people around the world. We will take in and 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 and, and uh, make it, uh, you know, a part of how we resonate and we develop the collection. Absolutely. Yeah, this is a cool photo. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Before we quit. And can you please repeat the hashtag for those who haven't noticed it? Uh, hashtag IKEA, I K E A times. Virgil, V I R G A L. So it's IKEA X Virgil. Are we done? Can we fly out of the. <laughs> <laughs> Are we done? Can we go like this? IKEA TV. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. MTV. Bye bye.